sessions. Before we actually continue with sessions, I want to say uh, congratulations on getting this far. Welcome to the PHP Advanced module. And this is where our PHP gets to be a little bit more complex. Our homework's going to get a little bit harder. The classes might get a little bit longer. And after this, including the SQL module, you're going to be set to create the most dynamic website you have ever created. So let's continue on. Here comes an absolutely amazing feature that PHP gives us. They're called sessions. We dealt with sessions in HTML5, and that was the session storage and the local storage. But at that time, we were still pretty new to a lot of the web development world. A session is a tiny file that is saved on the server that identifies you as you. They have a short life, and they're only saved for a longer period of time if the user refreshes the same page or goes to another page on the same website, and that script told PHP to continue the session. Sessions, they are one way we can store bits of information on the server, and they are unique to each user. In sessions, they're also accessed just like a super global variable. It's very similar to the get and the post super global variables. The difference is a session will be stored on any website we are hosting. So that this small information can actually be passed from page to page over and over, and it doesn't just stop at post or get where you know, we have to use that information in that current page. A session can be stored over 10 different pages. If you went from one page, you traveled six other pages, you didn't find what you're looking for, and you just stopped on the sixth page, that session information is still going to be there. But before we start using sessions, we need to tell the server that we actually want to use sessions. To do this, we type session start. There are no parameters at all. This just tells PHP that we want to start using sessions. As a note, if you're going to use sessions, type session start before any code. This means before the doc type, before HTML, before anything is displayed on the page, even a single space. It has to be before everything. A popular piece of code that you will see quite often in other people's scripts is the following. We have if is not set session session start. All that is saying is if we are not currently using sessions, if the server hasn't recognized that we want to use a session, then start them now. This is actually a great script to use on pretty much every page that uses PHP. In the event that you have one page that uses a session and then you've got nine pages that don't use a session. If a user goes on the page that uses a session, starts a session, has a session variable stored, and then moves one or two pages deep into other parts of the website that don't use sessions and does not have session start at the top of the page, then that session is going to be destroyed and it's going to have to recreate another one. So as you saw in the script that we just went over, and to refresh here, we have this. That is the super global variable. And this is the one that we use for sessions. Once we tell PHP to start using sessions by typing session start at the beginning of every one of our pages that we want to use sessions on, we can create custom sessions. A custom session looks like an array, and we should all know what an array looks like now. So here we have session start, just to make sure that session is started. Variable session, index name is equal to course, and the value is the complete web developer. With that, we can use session course to access the complete web developer value at any time in any scope. So it can be inside or outside of a function and we can access this. With this we can write as many sessions as we want. But remember, the more sessions we write, the more space is going to take up on our server. And that's going to slow the server down a little bit. It won't be noticeable until you get probably a few hundred thousand sessions going at any time. But that also depends on your server, its capability to keep up with all that. and. Even at then, if you've got a good enough server, you might not even notice then. But if we're talking about Facebook-sized websites with over a billion users, that's a lot of server space and processing power to maintain all those tiny files. Now, if Facebook used one session for every user that logged on, which is an average of 600 million users a day, we're looking at 600 million sessions. These are tiny little files. They might only be a couple bytes or a couple kilobytes big. But that adds up quickly, and sorting through that can take a lot out of a computer. Now, what if we used three sessions every time we logged on to Facebook? If we ended up using three sessions every time we logged on to Facebook, or for a different app on Facebook, or something like that, then with 600 million people in the course of a day, we're looking at 1.8 billion different files. Now, to sort through all that can be very devastating on a server. Now that we can start 
sessions and create custom sessions, we should know how to check if a particular session is set. To do this, we use the isSet function. We already know how to use this. And we use that with the exact session variable. Basically, this will add another level of security to your website. So let's look at the code here before we go to the demo page. We're going to write if is not set session, do we want to start the session? So we told the server, make sure sessions are running. If it's already running, you don't need to rerun it. You don't need to stop and restart it. Variable pass is equal to URL decode get p. Remember, that's going to be in the URL. If pass is equal to tcwd, then it's going to create session pass correct is equal to 1. That means it's true. After that, it's going to say if is set session pass correct. So if this is a set session, it could be wrong or false. It could be 0. It doesn't matter. The fact is that this session is going to be set. Then it's going to echo to you. You entered the correct password at least once. If that session is not set, you've never entered the password correctly, it's going to echo back to you. You have not entered the correct password. Please try again. Now going to the demo page here, it says you have not entered the correct password. And I'm just going to bring this down a little bit here so you can see my URL bar. You notice how it's just, uh, the file is just isset.php. Now if we added that parameter in there, p is equal to, because if we look back here, we're looking for URL decode get p. Variable p is up here. What if we wrote um, anything in here? Then it's going to continue to say that you have not entered the correct password. Try again. Now, what if we wrote the actual value that we're looking for, tcwd? Well, it's still going to say that we have not entered the correct password and that we should try again. Well, tcwd, what we're looking for is tcwd, but this is all capital letters. This is all lowercase letters. What if we typed it with all capital letters, like this? Well, you see here, we have password is equal to tcwd, the complete web developer, in capital letters. It says you entered the correct password at least once. Now, if we change this back to, it could be anything or any value we want, anything at all. And then you notice that our browser automatically URL encoded this, so change this basis to 20%. And it still says you entered the correct password at least once. That's because a session is now set. And every time we go to this page, even if we take this out, it's still going to say you entered the correct password at least once. So I'm hoping that made a little bit of sense because once a session is set, it is set for a few minutes at least, and a page has to be refreshed or we have to uh, restart the session in order for that session to stay alive. It's like holding your breath underwater. You can only hold your breath for maybe a minute, maybe two if you've got really good lungs. But by refreshing the page or restarting the session over, then we are going to be giving another minute or two to your lung capacity, basically. Now, an actual session, I believe by default, is about 15 minutes or so. But after that, once the session is destroyed, we would have to execute our demo page all over again and type in the right password. Now, if you ever want to end a session, all you have to do is write session destroy, and this will destroy all your PHP sessions. So if we have session start, this will start the session. Then we have session destroy, this will end the session. Now sometimes destroying a session like this doesn't take immediate effect. In that case, you'll want to use the unset function and unset all sessions manually or through a loop. So as an example here, we have session start, session A, session B is equal to Alfred and Bob respectively. For each session, because we're going through the array here, as S for session for our key and then B for our value, we're going to unset session s. So this is going to change each time, right? This is our key. So it's going to unset a and it's going to unset b. And if we try to echo session a and echo session b, what's going to be displayed is nothing. Nothing displays in here. This little white space you see in here, that's because nothing is there. Those sessions no longer exist. This method works as well. Uh, sometimes it's a good idea to use both session destroy and loop through all the sessions and manually unset the ones that you don't want to destroy. Or, alternatively, instead of going through a loop, you could just write unset session A 
you know, something like that. Now, why would you ever want to destroy sessions? You finally got the user on your website. You finally got them to create a session on your website. Now, why would you want to destroy that? Well, the reason, the main reason, is a logout system. A login system will log in the user, obviously, and continuously refresh that session. So every page that they go to where the session is already created is going to refresh that session and keep them logged in. Well, if they want to log out and, I don't know, log in with a different account or log out because they're in a library or a computer lab or something like that, they're at school, they're going to want to log out. And to do that, you're going to have to destroy the session. Now, here's a really quick example script of how many times you refresh a page. We wrote, if session is not started, we want the server to start it. Then we wrote, if it is not set, session count, then start it. Session count is equal to zero. So essentially, if this does not exist yet, create it. And then we're going to echo, you have refreshed. We're going to conjugate session count, conjugate times. And then at the end of that, we're going to increment our session count by one every time we refresh the page. Now, I'm not going to show you how this works. But feel free to copy this code into your page and refresh the page over and over again. You'll notice that the session count will rise continuously. It will go from 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Uh, finishing notes here. If you have a PHP page that won't use any sessions, I'd suggest starting a session anyways. And that's only if you have other pages on your site that do use sessions. This is so that the user session will stay alive longer by being refreshed more. There isn't really anything more bothersome than when a website automatically logs you out because of an old or a dead session. And that's happened to, I would say, pretty much all of us. Now think about this as well. What if we mix the power of sessions with an HTML form? And we would probably use the post method because it's a little more secure. If we mix sessions with a post form, we could actually create a login system. Now we'd have to manually hard code the password in there, but it would essentially still create a login system. Now for your homework, I want you to create two files, session1.php and session2.php. On session1, I want you to start a session, then create a custom session. And by that, I mean basically do this. Start your session, create a custom session with a value of your choice. On session2.php, start a session and echo the session from session1. So whatever you called it on session1.php, on session2.php, I want you to echo that back. I want you to refresh the session2.php page a few times and notice what happens. If you have done this right, then your session2 page successfully carried over a variable from session1 without actually transferring anything through the URL or using a form.